at uh, Metropole TVKA across all your social media platforms. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiyage. Thank you very much for choosing to begin your business day with us just a day before we take that break tomorrow for the markets and come back on 21st. I have a lot of business headlines for you this morning. Let me take my time to introduce the panel that is joining us this morning we do have wahomengari who's a financial literacy coach good morning sir good morning to you happy to have you around we do have odhiambo ramogi who's an economic analyst and ceo elema capital odhiambo ramogi good morning sir good morning simba happy to have you around as well you can join us online at metropole tvke across all your social media platforms I am at Kiyanga Simba. Let's get the conversation going on. Hashtag Business AM. Hopefully the hashtag is live for cool people. All right, let's continue this morning. It now looks certain that the Treasury will inject cash into Kenya Power and Kenya Airways in the financial year starting July 2022 after it cited the important role the two firms will play in supporting economic recovery from COVID-19. Treasury did not allocate bailouts for the two firms in the current financial year, which exposed the firms that were already going through tough cash flow issues. Now, positions could have hurt operations and slowed down recovery in economic activity. Now, the cash office last Wednesday commenced a three-day public hearing forum, which will be behind sectoral budget proposals for the next financial year. KQ has already made a plea for financial support to get it out of its negative equity position Position, with Kenya Power's operating losses also rising faster than revenue, a factor that has seen the power utility hit 15.99 billion in losses for the years through to June 2020. We don't have Kenya Power data this morning. Let's take a look at it because we do know where KQ is, and you can see that negative profitability trend all the way from 2018 to 2020. Let's move on to the next data set. Yes, indeed, that negative 362 change between 2019 and 2020 has seen KQ close 2020 at negative 939.48 in terms of millions in profitability, almost a billion in losses. And you can see that profitability trend again for selected performance indicators for the financial year 2020. Good. Odiyan Baramogi, let me begin with you this morning. That there's two institutions, especially Kenya Power and KQ, are instrumental in the recovery process for the economy, especially from the holds of the coronavirus pandemic. So it makes sense for us to push more money into KQ and Kenya Power. Do you agree with Treasury? Well, I do not agree, Simba. Um, I agree that we need energy. Uh, we don't necessarily need it from Kenya Power. Yes. I also agree that we need to fly, whether we're flying in tourists and business uh, professionals, um, or investors, or we are flying them out. Yes. Uh, but we don't need Kenya Airways to do that. Um, there are other players in the market. Um, for me, I don't think that a priority of, the, of this government should be to inject money back into these businesses that are uh, repeatedly underperforming. Yes. For me, I think the priority should be one, that government should sell some of its shares in, in these establishments, reduce it to less than 20 percent. Yes. Uh, that it should restructure the ownership of Kenya Power and Kenya Airways. Um, that it should then, after that, restructure the management properly with proper visions, uh, strategies, and objectives in the next um, three years or so, um, short to medium term. And then after that, then we, we can talk about, you know, giving them money. Now we're just giving them money under the old arrangement. It's new wine into the old wine skin. Nothing really outstanding. Yes. And so, no, I'm not overly excited about this. Obviously, there is a clear clarity that the government is interested in protecting um, shareholder value. But you don't do that with um, just pumping in money 
uh, in a, a broken vessel. You yes. do that by fixing the vessel first. Pretty much. Uh, but just before I bring in uh, Wahome and Gabri this morning, well, the Amaro Mogi, the, the, the importance of the Kenyan government holding on to some sectors. People will say when it comes to power, energy, security, that they actually need to have the final say on especially how these particular sectors are run, which makes sense, therefore, for Kenya Power and KQ to be of concern or of importance for the government. Does that side of the coin make sense? Well, I have been an advocate for devolving or devolution of energy uh, resources or devolution of energy management yes. uh, for the longest time. Yes. Imagine if we had 47 Kenya powers, like each county has its own um, Kenya power, um, so that then the county government takes charge over the distribution of electricity. Um, whether this is happening with split Kenya power or we, we just liberalize the energy market yes. and allow you know guys to do this at the level of the county, um, private investors who just want to invest into energy distribution to do this. Um, look, we, the Kenya power will be efficient in less than 24 hours. <laughs> they will restructure, they will come up with modalities of ensuring that one, they are cost effective, yes. and two, their management structure makes sense. Right now, it doesn't because they are a monopoly in terms of power distribution. Um, and even then, to either produce power themselves, power consumers, or use solar, uh, and, or, or use other alternatives. Uh, so that is why you see Kenya Power, a monopoly, re reporting losses in, in, in a country that uses power throughout. Um, and so, yes. If, Come on, we need to devolve power from um, uh, from um, devolve energy management yes. um, across the board, not just in terms of uh, geographically, but also devolve it in terms of management. I have several other private sector players uh, create some competitive environment. It will get efficient. Now, what we are seeing is just a government bureaucracy. Pretty much. Udiambura Mogi, I'll be coming back to you shortly. So I'll ask you whether indeed the kind of reforms that we're seeing the government push in these two institutions will then justify uh, the eventual decision for them to push money into them. Let me also bring in Wahome um, and Gary to the conversation. Wahome and Gary, how instrumental are these two organizations in the government's delivery of its developmental agenda to warrant treasury to insert into the budget document 2022-2023 a plan to pump cash or bail out these two institutions the services that they offer let's take kenya power we need power throughout the republic yes for us to attain vision 2030 we require power yes should it be distributed by a monopoly that doesn't deliver? My answer is no. Yes. We have found more efficient ways of giving services. I think that their communication is a very good example. Years back, it was damn difficult to have your line running all the time. Now, government, government is not great in business, and government will never do business. Government brings in a lot of bureaucracy and inefficiency. So while we need distribution of electricity, we do not necessarily need it done by Kenya Power. It can be Kenya Power, but not owned by government. Yes. Because go government doesn't look at Kenya Power as a business enterprise. And that is why we have all these inefficiencies. Um, they, are, they, are, they are given instructions sometimes of who to connect. They buy power from um, the sources that are very expensive. They, they, they don't run efficiently. And because they don't run efficiently, they are not efficient with the consumer. Yes. We need power. We cannot grow without power in this nation. But the way it's being done now, I think we have a problem. But if you look at Kenya Airways, I think my view is a bit different on Kenya Airways. Um, one, for national pride. We do not want to stay without an, um, um, an airline because there are things that we need to push 
for our economy to come back. Yes. We need to have our flowers lighted to where the destination markets are. And Kenya does a bit of that. We need to have the tourists coming and we need to have all the other people. But Kenya Airways has to play in the international arena. It has to compete with Emirates and all the other airlines that are government supported, uh, Ethiopian Airlines and all the others. So I think for Kenya Airways, the situation is a bit different from Kenya Power. Yes, yeah. pretty much. Let me then get back to you as well, and I want you to pick up from where um, Wahome Ngari is uh, dropped that ball, that his position on Kenya Airways is a bit different, and then uh, attach that response or that reaction to the question that I asked you earlier. We've seen a lot of um, reforms being pushed into these two institutions, especially KQ. We don't know when they started. They are still going on. And Kenya Powers, well, we have been promised that by the end of this year, December 2021, we're going to pay less in the power of um, the, the cost of power by 33%. Is that enough then for us to say, indeed, if you keep on pushing these reforms into these institutions, then they do warrant government bailout if they are going to take a sound financial position. Um, I differ with Wahome. Kenya Airways is a bottomless <laughs> pit. <laughs> We've pumped enough money there over the years. Uh, even the days of Titus and Aikuni, we still pumped money there. Yes. But I don't joke. We cannot just spend money on <laughs> being proud of the pride of Africa. We need value. It's just not sentimental value. Yes. It has to be quantitative value. Yes. And they are not delivering that. They have failed over the years, over the decades, actually. Um, those flowers actually can go with other cargo. Uh, in fact, I think KLM does that. I, British Airways can do that. Emirates can do that. It doesn't have to be, even Ethiopian Airlines does that. It doesn't have to be Kenya Airways, Kenya Airways. Um, because man, that money can go into building hospitals. It can go into paying doctors. It can go into buying PPEs. Uh, we can't just be fattening some people in some of these companies. Ah, it's too much. It's, it's just too <laughs> much. It's time we stopped this and said the truth. Pride yeah. cannot be this expensive. At, at, let's be humble uh, as Africans. In, in terms of Kenya Airways, um, really being asked, being promised that if they pump in money, they are going to lower the, the cost of power downwards. Uh, my friend, there is nothing they are going to do different from what they have done. These guys just want more money into Kenya <laughs> power because somehow it is a basket collecting yes. money for some people. Yes. Um, I, I differ. I know that these are plans for August 2022 or Ju June 2022 or July. Um, but I still differ. And I think if, when that public participation comes up, uh, maybe some of us should do a petition and just tell them watch any jokes because this has <laughs> gone on for too long. Um, and, and, and that reform needs to be uh, exhaustive. Yes, pretty much. Mohamed Gabri, let's get back on that as well, and I'll put you on the same platform that I've actually put um, with Yambo Ramogi, that if indeed you're promising reforms, and you're saying, well, the cost of power in the country is going to go down by 33%, then it will warrant then the government to look at Kenya power and say, even did we're pushing reforms into this particular institution, then why not bail them out? Uh, I don't think um, that percentage uh, drop in power price is going to be achieved. Yes. There is no magic. There is no new thinking. There is, this, this, there is no bag of tricks that they are going to come up with. Yes. And just like um, William has said, they see this as um, a nice basket where they can put their hand in all the time. <laughs> But it doesn't mean the cost of power can't come down. I mean, the cost of calling came down by what percent? If you, if you remember years back, how much it used to call, I mean, how many people used to own a uh, cell phone? Cell phone was out of reach. Airtime was completely out of reach. Yes. When you, when you create an environment where, which is competitive and the players are doing business, the price will come down. That distribution cost, Whatever it is, but the structure as is today cannot deliver that. 
we do not see that thinking coming through for that to be. So unless we say, let's privatize the whole of this thing, let government get out of business and let yes. the people who understand business to do business. That's the only way we can realize. And in fact, if we did that, we do not even need government money. The private sector comes with its own money, whether they are going to do a bond or whatever they are going to do. We don't need government money. If government just agrees to get out of that business, it will be run efficiently. Interesting. What we do know is that in the financial year 2022-2023, Treasury is already putting a plan in place to bail out the two institutions. For us, to sit back and say, if they pump in that money, then would these two institutions be effective? That is for a wait and see. Now, data from the control of budget, that's the COB, shows that salaries and benefits for counties staff grew 2.4% to 176.03 billion from 171.83 billion. Now the previous year, making this the slowest pace in the year through to June. Now this represents though a 3.2% decrease from last year's growth rate of 5.6% rise in the same period last year. With this latest figures indicating what would seem to be a lost war to bring down county expenditure. Now, the latest rise comes at a time when employee numbers at the counties increased by 7.7% to 204,000 last year. Now, the report by the Control of Budget has also indicated that counties, unlike the national government, have continued to hire new employees with the majority of the counties, however, breaching the law on the cap on spending on salaries and allowances. Now, wait for this. The report indicates that a whopping 42 counties out of 47 in the country failed to stick to the ceiling on wage bills. Ha! Huh. All right, let's look at then how much the counties are giving us so we can look at this data and say maybe do they have a justification. And from this data that we're showing you here this morning, you can see from 2017 to 2019, 2020, that indeed that money has been rising. But a caveat is that just a couple of counties are the ones that have been able to meet that ceiling of the money that each county is supposed to generate out of its own source revenue. Same thing in the next data set, let's put it into proper figures, then you can see that indeed from 2016 to 2019, 2020, that county government's total revenue trend has been increasing, but not meeting the target that have been set. Let's move on to the next data set this morning, and you can see in terms of equitable share allocation to county governments, it has continued to increase and have continued to demand more from the national government, but according to that report, as of 2020, only 42 counties, only five counties, sorry, have been able to stick to that PFM Act. That stipulates how much money you're supposed to spend on our salaries vis-a-vis development. All right, let's move on to the next data this morning in terms of our recurrent expenditure. And you can see one conversation across the board from 2015 to 2019, 2020, it has been increasing. And one area that it has not really come down is that we failed to get a formula for salaries. And the wage bill in this country has continued to increase despite the promise from the Salaries and Remuneration Commission that this is supposed to come down with the latest report indicating that even the top offices in this country, that is Uhuru Kenyatta's and the Deputy President's office, are the ones that are even borrowing money for development to pay their own employees. In fact, if you look at that increment in terms of their pay or their wages in those two offices, it's more than a thousand percent increase. All right, let's talk about it this morning then. Udiamba Ramogi, how can counties of expenditure on salaries be capped from time to time again we come here on this show and say, well, the control of budget has released a new report. Oh, only five counties in this country are the ones that are sticking to the expenditure protocol. The other ones are broken that law. Can they be stopped? 
this is a systemic issue. Yes. Uh, le and let me describe the, the systemic issues around it. One are the legal issues of um, does the national government have oversight over the county government? Yes. So that the control of budget uh, really can only recommend, can only propose policy, uh, but cannot, in essence, say you have to do this or you have to do that. Yeah. Cannot enforce that policy uh, as, as much as it would want. Um, because in all essence of its power, the county government is a government. Yes. It is not subject to the president. It is not subject to uh, the, count, the control of budget. It is subject to the people of Kenya that have empowered their uh, leaders representing them. Now, on the other hand, yes, we have a challenge of county governments that are underperforming in terms of financial management uh, because what they are doing, uh, it's less than attractive. Um, they are overspending. They are... They are questions of how they are spending here and there. Um, and, and this can only be solved, in essence, by one, the law that we've just turned down, the High Court has just turned down, that we have quality representation. Because we are electing people because simply we know them, or they are children <laughs> of chiefs, or simply they, they served the governor nicely uh, last time, so this time around they have to go into Bunge. Or yeah. as someone said, people's side chicks are becoming nominated members of county <laughs> assembly. And so we do not have quality representation that can hold the county government accountable and say, no, you cannot overspend. This is the law and yes. this is the money we have and this has to be spent this way. Uh, we do not have that. We do not have a county government that has capacity to do proper budgeting procedure in terms of, because you see, at the end of the day, the power of the past lies with parliament, yes. whether it's at the national government or at the county assembly, the power of the past lies with parliament. And so it is them to determine this goes here and this doesn't, this remains here. If they do not have that capacity, we will have this conversation until kingdom come. And they have intentionally ensured that the county government has no that capacity. Moving forward, then that systemic issue has to be solved so that we have proper oversight, we have proper representation in parliament, and we have proper people, I mean people with capacity to make legislative decisions that will um, be in tandem with the law and in tandem with the general policy direction. Pretty much. All right, let me bring in um, Mohamed Gary also to weigh in on that. Mohamed Gary, when the control of budget is tabling a report, that shows that only five counties in the entire nation are sticking to the PFM Act of expenditure. That does it, what does it indicate? Are we just watching the county bosses do whatever they like, whenever they like? Even at a time when we're talking about um, hiring being frozen in the national government, county governments are increasing that hiring process, and when we look at that, it has increased 7.7 percent. That now holds 204,000 employees in the country. I mean, what, what we, how do we make sense of that, Mohamed Gary? I, I think for me, it's easier to see uh, where we are. We have a serious problem. Yes. Uh, let's let's start with it. Uh, when we constituted the county governments, when they came in uh, place, they got three tiers of employees. The, the previous uh, county councils and municipal councils had employees who did not live. Yes. Functions of the central government were actually devolved, and they came with a whole set of employees. And one of the campaign manifestos for all these protections were they were going to create jobs. And you know, in the mind frame of a lot of people, government should be an employer. And so we come in, so when I come into office, I bring in more people and I hire more people. When you change the leadership, the governor, and you bring a new governor, he also hires more people. Yes. So we, 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 we actually sit in a place where it's difficult. And I think as William says, there's a huge gap between the quality of the governor and the quality of the MCAs. Yes. And of course, now the court has said that degree does not add or subtract. Yes. It's surprising. Ten years down the line, people don't want to go to the university. 
<laughs> but the capacity and the logic, I don't know whether you've ever had a chance to maybe even visit um, the county assembly to hear the quality of discourse that goes on there. Yes. It's a very, very sorry state for the amount <laughs> of money that we dedicate into that institution. Because really, it, it's all emotion. That's why there's a lot of fight. People cannot have an intellectual fight. They can only have a physical fight. And, and you know, if that's how we are going to solve problems, then we have a serious problem. So, so uh, just like William says, we have a very challenging systematic problem. So the system is not working. Yes. And uh, we have a nice way of dealing with problems in this country, just throw in more money. And when you throw in more money, somebody is happy on the other side, just to leave, receive it and put it away. So the numbers, as, as, as you've seen them, are not going to get better. We're facing an election in one year's time. If we change the leadership, the new, guy, new guys who come, will have to fire. And by the way, politicians don't have confidence, I mean, don't have the courage to fire people because they see us as votes. So nobody can actually say, let's rationalize the labor force because they see us as votes. So they don't have that courage and they ca it cannot be expected from that. But again, this is a government. The national government does not have a, not have a whip with which it is going to align the county government. So these are the things that are sorted out by time. We will suffer until we actually able to find a solution for ourselves. Interesting point that you're putting across there, that in one in 10 years, nobody may even want to go to university with the sort of high court rulings that we saw the other day on that specific one. Then what? Or the Umbra Mogi give more powers to the COB? Sorry, I'm not sure I got the question, but yes. you're asking if... Give more powers to the COB so that once... They are giving us this report. They are also then running down on these other counties that are not meeting that, um, that, that ratio. Um, giving more powers to the COB would upset the principle of separation of uh, powers. Yes. Because the powers that you are telling COB is actually, in fact, the powers that Parliament has, or in this case, the powers that the county assembly has. And so if you give it to the COB, uh, that means then that is the COB becomes the oversight authority. Yes. That, that is just uh, unhealthy. Yes. It, it, this, this county assembly just has to style up, man, and we need to get quality representation. Uh, <laughs> the COB is doing its job, but the county assembly is not. That's it. Right. Gentlemen, we take a short break, but once we come back, a new clause has been inserted into the CBK Amendment Bill 2021 that says, should a digital lender share any data regarding the borrowing activity of any borrower, then the CBK has the power to cancel the license of that digital lender. Is that what we need? But then again, the conversation is on interest rates. Should we also say that regulating interest rates is also part of what should be in this bill? Because indeed, we do know that that's where the conversation point is going to come from once this becomes law in the country. Once we come back here on a business I am, hashtag a business I am at Metropole TVKE across all your social media platforms. We'll be back shortly.